Hey guys, let's talk about the wings on the uh, Hong Kong Models 30 second scale Lancaster. Um, if you're after accuracy, as you know, um, there is an issue with the fact that both wings have um, landing lights and they should only be on the port side. Um, and both wings have hatches in the top like this. Sorry, that's a repaired one. They both have hatches like this here. I don't know if you could make that out in the light. There's a hatch there. That's a that's a dinghy hatch, and that should only be in the starboard wing. So, what I've done, as you'll see in previous videos, I've filled them and now I've re it and scribed them and everything. So now that hatch has disappeared, um, and we've got riveting. And on the other side, the landing lights. Um, They've disappeared as well so uh, job done um, that could be slightly better but the fact that it's on the underside and it's all going to be painted black I'm not going to redo it but I could have got the alignment better on the right hand side there on those bottom two rows but I think we'll leave it like that for now um, the way I did this I should have videoed it um, you can use riveting wheels um, which are absolutely fine uh, I think I've got one here this is my um, RB Riveter, absolutely brilliant little tool, it's called the Rivet R. It's from RB Productions, as you can see on there. Fantastic little tool, you get four different pitches and you literally just roll that along. The only downside with these is because of their design, they're basically, um, they're, they're photo etched stainless steel, I think. You kind of get a square hole um, and when you've got, you know, rivets this big, you, you, what I've done is gone over it and then I've used a, um, a pin, a pin punch like this, like this, and then just gone over and um, just rounded the holes up with that just by literally pushing it into the, the divot made by this. So that gives you the effect you can see there. So that gives you your, your nice round rivets and it keeps it all the same as the surrounding rivets. So. That's the kind of thing you're after. Um, if you're not fussed about accuracy and stuff, then just leave it as it is. Um, one of the big disappointments for me on the kit is the landing lights. If we look at the 70 second scale Revell and the 70 second scale Airflix is the same, you get these landing lights in the wing and they've got like a radius bowl in there to paint silver and then a clear part to put on top. Um, on the HK models, all you get is a, is a circle marked out on the surface um, which I think for 30 second scale is is ridiculous uh, so I started I should have started this before I started doing the work but I, I didn't think it was going to be worth filming but I think it is um, I was kind of considering I was gonna have to drill through and then put something in behind but as it happens I think we talked before about the mold shift on these parts and you can see that this lower section of the wing is extremely thick and the top is extremely thin. I think what's happened is the 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 said because they've done this. I don't know why, but they've made this one piece wing section instead of having two wing halves, which means you've got to glue a tip on and get rid of a seam. And I really don't know why they did it. I just don't understand the the point. But anyway, um, it is what it is. But luckily, because I suppose every cloud is a silver lining, because the plastic is so thick, it's thick enough to produce a bowl. So I've done one and I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll video it now and, um, and show you what I'm doing. So what I've done, I've just basically drilled down a couple of mil deep into the center. As you can see, well, that's slightly off center, but we're not going to worry about that. I'll show you how to get around that. Um, and then I've got this, this is five millimeters. You really need, these are five and a half mil, these holes. So you really need something a bit bigger. Now I know I've got something bigger in the garage, but it's blowing a gale and pouring down the rain. So I'm not going in the garage today. But um, I'm just going to show you with this. This is a 5 mil, so you can get what you need. Um, and I've marked out the edge of the holes with, uh, with some pencil lead, so you can see basically what's there. Uh, I think what I'll do now is just go over with a sponge, just quickly sand away any edge that's on there with a fine sponge, and that'll refine that line. So you can see there that I've gone in with this, this, um, this 5 mil ball cutter and just basically produced that bowl. Um, these are available in sets or individually from all over the place. I don't know where I got these from, but um, they are available. 
Um, so that one there you can see is slightly off center. So what I'm going to do is just with my knife is just literally move it that way like that. And then I can take this ball cutter and push it in. Oh, I've put a sanding sponge inside to support so I don't split anything or crack anything. Um, and as I say, you've got to be really careful because the other side, the upper surface of the wing is extremely thin. Um, you can almost see light through it if you look down inside the wing. Um, it's a bit of a worry. I'm going to have to put something inside there. I think I'll epoxy some plastic card or something in there um, after the wing is built up because uh, you can see it's it's very, very thin. It just, I don't know if I can catch that in the light and show you, but it just is it's ridiculously thin. Um, apparently somebody um, on the LSM website, apparently they contacted HK Models about it and they said, oh, don't worry, it'll be fine. Okay, thanks for that then. Um, so all I'm doing with this is just push it in and you can see straight away that I'm starting to favour that way. So what I need to do is just remove some material from there like so and then start again and it will find its own center eventually and then you'll be uh, well away let's just move a bit more material from there and I would suggest doing this by hand not with a tool because if you slip and you're using a, um, a motor tool you're gonna you know it's gonna ruin your day like I say, it's, uh, it's a bit of an advantage, the fact that it's all so thick, which is a good thing. And I'm still trying to get this to shift over. You can see that all I'm doing is just taking away the edge so that the tool will sort of move into that edge and find its own centre. There we go, I think we're nearly there now. Yeah, we're there now. So I could just go on, just keep pushing this in. Like so. Just keep going really until we get rid of that um you can see the still see the remnants of the drilled hole at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do with this afterwards, I will make up a light bulb. I'll show you in a second and then put the light bulb in there. I'll paint it all silver first and then put the light bulb in there and then fill it up with some something clear. I don't quite know what yet. I don't want to use Humbrol. Um, clear fix because I've used that for remember on my ambulance and it all went bubbly and it looked awful. So I'm doing an experiment at the moment with um, with some contact to clear Revell glue, which is very similar to um, Clear Fix, I believe. Not Clear Fix, Crystal Clear. Um, And there we go. So we can see now that we've got the bowls in there. We've got our bowls in there without doing any work from behind at all. So that's that's an advantage of having those wings this thick. Um, now I'm going to need to get a slightly larger cutter, a ball cutter, and just go in there and open it out. Probably best to use a, a six mil um, because these are five mil and maybe not go quite so deep. Uh, sorry, these are five and a half mil. The, the, the circle and if you really want to be fussy if you look on um, large scale modeler I've got a thread on there about um, twe tweaks and everything for this kit and somebody's kindly put a picture up of the um, of an actual pair of these lights taken on the wing because it's very difficult to find pictures of these online um, and you can see it on this one there's actually like a, a hinge on the front. These lights actually hinge down, they're landing lights, but HK have missed that out. All they've done is given you this ring around the outside with rivets. So if you really want to go to town, you could put that 
line in there I probably will um, just to sort of you know get it all a bit more accurate um, and if you really want to you know make your model stand out in the crowd perhaps have the landing lights in a lower position so um, there we go and I'll show you how I make the light bulbs now okay so I've taken a piece of clear sprue and stretched it you want to add a stretch sprue hold the heat pull it so we've now got a sort of thin thin um, shard if you like on there of clear and all I'm going to do now is with my cigarette lighter is just light it let the plastic approach the flame and you'll see the end of it will start to form a ball just like so keep turning it and there we go so we've got a ball on the end of there now if you can make that out there's a ball there yeah so all I'll do is drill into the bottom of that bowl cut this off and then slip that inside there inside that bowl and then that will be the light bulb after it's painted silver and everything right staying with the wings um, looking at assembly there is a slight error in the instructions um, I think HK are going to put it right on their next release um, this part here K47 is an insert that goes inside the wing underneath the outboard uh, engine on both wings and then on the other wing you've got the same part um, L47 as you can see there and these are the parts here that are like little uh, waste paper bins I've marked them up L and K and um, yeah what they're doing they're telling you to put them in at this stage after you've done all this with the tip and the, the piece at the back and if you can see that from off camera um, this here so yeah the thing to do is do this first put that piece in before anything else um, and it's quite awkward to get in so I need K47 for this wing and if I just show you you kind of have to tuck your hand up inside and get the part up in there and then kind of working up inside the wing just flip it over and and then slide it into place and it'll click in there we go so that's in there now and then once that's in we can just get some of our Tamiya extra thin and just put a, a drop in there and a drop in there and let that go off um, I'm not going to glue the top um, because if it needs to move around a bit to get the other parts to fit I'm going to uh, I don't want to um, you know risk having it all twisting about or anything so uh, this would also allow the wing to to flex a bit for these bits to go in and then maybe once all the back is in maybe you can just put some glue down in there but be careful on the other wing as I mentioned earlier um, as I mentioned earlier it's very thin on the top so uh, let's get this this is the one I'm working on the lights on um, let's just get this in here let's just push this in as I say it's, it's quite awkward you need to be a little bit careful this wings thin on the top and as I said earlier the, the other ones thin on the bottom I, like I said I don't know why they made these wings like this it seems crazy to me So there we go and yes I have changed the glue the reason I've changed it is because that bottle of extra thin I was using yesterday for a demo for beginners um, just on saying this is the glue to buy and I don't like using full bottles um, reason is I'll show you now get the parts out of the way when you've got a full bottle of extra thin it's it's all up the neck it's everywhere and um, it can drip off onto your model and the last thing you want to do is go drip an extra thin onto this detail on the wing so um, there we go they're in so they're now there and they're, they sort of open the wing up a bit and give it a bit of rigidity um, I've also been working on sanding down the seams on the front um, they need work they need some uh, filler in around them because the you've got these gates that are on them that they they obviously break off in the factory I'm guessing and uh, they, they need some work and they've got sink marks around them so um, yeah be prepared to do a little bit of filler work on there 
Um, and there we go. Right, moving on to the wing tips. Um, they are sided, so make sure you actually get the right one. Um, for this wing, we've got part number G9, which is this one. Um, yeah, make sure you get the right one. You don't want to be... Uh, the other part is here, which is actually um, I, I9. Where is that? Six. I6, by the look of it. So, uh, yeah, make sure you get the right one. This is the... Um, this is the starboard wing, so we want to get the uh, the right part, G9. Um, it's worth noting, if you're building a B1, B3, or I think pretty much any wartime Lancaster, these formation lights are incorrect. They need to be sanded off and uh, replaced with a single um, clear lens. You can uh, look online and see pictures of that. And there's lots and lots of um, bits and pieces on, on subjects that show you how to do that. You basically cut a piece out and glue in a piece of um, clear and then and then sand it to shape. But they, they are actually incorrect. I'm not even sure what they are right for. Um, I'm not sure if a Mark 10 has them or if it was even a post-war change. Um, I don't really know. I, I, I think um, Just Jane has got them. So uh, Just Jane was a Mark 7, I believe. So, um, yeah, now... This, to me, is crazy the way they've done this, but it, it is what it is. Um, so as I said earlier, there's, there's a shift in the core of the mold tool. So we need to do some, just some modifications here. And you can see that when I fit the wing tip on, what I'm going to do, just to make life a bit easier for you to see, is shove a modeling sponge in there. And that makes it a bit easier to, to see what's going on. It also makes the fitting more positive. So I'm going to slide this slide this over the sponge or over the flange get the sponge out of the way and basically slide the wing tip on like so. And because I've got the sponge in there it kind of stays there on its own. Um, and straight away we can feel that on the upper side we've got a step this way so the tip is actually I don't know if I can show you on there but the tip is actually lower this is higher than the tip so there's a step that way so we need to pack that up and on the underside the step is the other way so what I need to do here is just go along inside here and remove some material On that side and just get the, the bottom side to sit flush and I must admit I've already done a little bit of that so that's why you didn't see me removing too much but um there we go that's, that's still got a slight step there I just want to take a bit more out but on the top what we're going to need to do is obviously the top is more important I've cut a piece of I did try a piece of 10 thou strip and it was too much so I've got here a piece of 5 thou plastic card, 0.125 millimetres. And I'm just going to sit that on top of there. And you will see that it falls straight off again. You will see straight away the difference it makes. Oh, I did this off camera and it went my right first time. Gonna put that on there. And then we can see that when I slide the nail across there, the step has gone. So there we go. Now we've got to be very, very careful with the glue on this joint because as you can see we've got rivets either side. But you can see now that that, that joint is pretty much invisible certainly will be under a coat of paint and then this side is is much better too so the other thing to look at I think on here is the panel lines now there is an issue here the front of the, the leading edge of the tip is like a different radius than the wing 
which is a shame. Um, you wouldn't believe this is a £400 model, would you? Um, the, the leading edge of the wing tip is a different radius to the rest of the wing, so it needs to be squeezed in. So my suggestion is to squeeze it in and bend it before you fit it and then let the two take their own form because if you have to do any sanding in this area it's going to mean re riveting and um, there are a lot of rivets in this area so I would suggest um, you know taking the time in the preparation rather than trying to correct it afterwards and we can see here now that I've got it pretty much generally flush I've got these panel lines pretty much in line but you can see the massive step we've got there so what we need to do is just try and concentrate on the top and I would suggest getting this panel line to line up here because rescribing that afterwards won't be easy um, but it's going to have to have some sanding as you can see by the uh, by the step that's there so um, I'll go off camera now and get all this done and I'll come back when it's uh, when it's on right so <clears throat> still with this tip I've been playing with it for about 20 minutes now um, the tip I mean uh, the wing tip I mean um, I've, I've glued this um, 5 thou uh, plastic strip on here something else of note you need to sand some of this um, lip away because it would appear that this lip is slightly longer than the recess is in the wing tip so it sort of stops it butting up so I've still got the sanding sponge in there to, to wedge it all open and it would appear that we've basically got two choices here about how we can do this um, either way is going to require some work it's not a Tamiya fit so if we choose to line up our panel lines if you can see this um, if I get the panel lines light up so we got just get this here so I've got this panel line here lined up and I've got this panel line here lined up then we get the problem with the the fit and let's try and get to focus it. try and get to focus we get a problem with the fit here at the front edge um, sorry that's pushed back now here we go we get this problem here so that's going to require sanding and re-riveting but if we pull the wing back to get a better fit the panel lines don't line up um, and I think it all looks a bit odd and also you get a step at the back here so I'm not really 100% sure what I need to do um, the underside still needs a little bit removed I've still got a bit of a step there but I'm not too worried about the underside you know we, we can work on that but the top we really want to get the top absolutely perfect um, the other thing I've noticed is if you, I don't know if I'm going to show you on the camera, if you look down the length of the wing tip, you can see it's kind of almost bowed. Um, it's, it's sort of swan necks off if you see to the side, so that's going to need some work as well. Um, do you know what? I'm really contemplating just chucking this thing in the bin. Um, or selling it or something because it really is taking it out of me uh, every single piece I pick up I find something wrong and I should just get on and throw the bloody thing together really but um yeah so that's going to require some sanding and re-riveting and everything to get that shape right but uh, there we go so I'll carry on with this and I'll come back when I've got something more to show you still toiling away on these wings and um Sort of trying to understand what, what HK want me to do here really. Uh, they're telling you to put the tip on here at the same time as putting this part in the back of the um, this is the trailing edge of the wing just in front of the aileron this part K17 more on that in a minute we've already fitted this K47 and that is absolutely a must to do that first because if you glue this in first you won't get that part in there likewise if you glue these in you won't get that in there so that part needs to go in before anything else um, before you do any of this or anything it needs to be that part first um, 
so I'm looking at these parts here. This is the this is the part that goes in the trailing edge, and there's no actual location for it um, lengthways. So I've taken these parts off the sprue. These are actually the um, the interior detail of the flaps, which is um, which is well, it's, it's, it's lacking. Uh, so if we go, if we put them in like this, um, I've still got the sponge in there, I believe. No, I haven't. So it's this actually holding the wing apart now. So what I'm going to have to do is clamp the wing up to get these to stay in place. Now, I don't really want to fit these yet because um, there's going to be some aftermarket. If you look at the, the detail on these and the absolute multitude of ejector pin marks, um, I think it soon becomes apparent that, you know, they could really do with some aftermarket to dress them up. And likewise, the actual tech, the other part of the flaps um, here, the parts that drop down, um, they've missed out the holes along here. This is supposed to be a raised section above all this ribbing. Uh, and you can see once again, we've got loads of ejector pin marks and this ribbing is is not really anything like the um, the actual wing itself and again here we've got the interior detail of the, the the longer flap there but again ejector pin marks all over it ribbing okay and again these holes this is this is um, a separate sheet of metal that you can see through the holes and in 30 second scale I really would have thought that would have been re represented a bit better um, so yeah, I'm not really 100% sure what I'm going to do with all this, but uh, basically what I wanted to point out here, oh, again, we've got this part goes on this way, so you've got the, the radius is towards the aileron, obviously, and again, there's ejector pin marks all down there. They could have put them on that side, but no, they put them on this side instead. It's much better, isn't it? Um, so they've got to all be sanded out, but I'll probably do that after it's fitted into the wing. But there's nothing that actually locates it um, lengthways. So I think the thing to do is the same as I've done here, is to dry fit these, um, these in place and butt that up before you glue it in. But I don't want to glue this in yet because I need to get inside the wing and put some stiffening in where it's so thin. Um, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to put the stiffening in before I do the wing tips because it may distort the wing to the point where the wing tips don't fit properly. So it's all a bit of um, jiggery pokery and having to sort of just sort of push and pull everything around. Now you can see I've got a close peg on the on the leading it on the tip trying to um, get the shape into it that we need. Um, and then I've got the wing tip doesn't want to go on. There we go. Ugh, it just all just falls apart. Um, I just wish they copied the Airfix model. Why didn't they just do what Airfix did? Because the Airfix model is brilliant. Uh, and it's been around for a few years. They could have easily copied that. Um, and in fact, the flap detail on the Airfix is better as well. Um, so yeah, you've got, there's no, you can see down in there, there's no real positive location for this trailing edge part. So really it's a case of sort of, I'm going to sellotape this in place and then concentrate on the top of the, the wing tip and get this joint here right. But I need to be able to take that out so I can get something in there to, to stiffen this wing up. So I'll get that done now and I'll come back after I've glued the tip on. Okay, so we're glued on now. Um, that's taken a lot of time. Uh, I've actually got a sanding sponge in there to wedge up all apart and keep it uh, keep it nice and tight. Um, yeah, basically you've got to be really careful because the trailing edge here, the bit just in front of the aileron, that has no location on, so it can it can do this. So um, yeah, you need to make sure that's actually dead level and get some glue in there. I've used some Tamiya quick setting initially and then put some extra thin in um, in the joint. Um, you can just see if I can catch it like you could just see where I've dabbed the brush and then give it a quick polish. Uh, I've lined up the panel lines um, and also the rear of the aileron here. Uh, as I said, it, 
it, it's put the front out. If you push the wingtip back so that this lines up, none of the panel lines line up. Um, and also it's, it's further back here. So you may have to sort of sand the back and then bring the, that, that scribe line back in and rescribe the line here on the front. And then you're gonna have a line this off there. Um, so I've gone for ha actually having the, the panel lines lined up. Unfortunately, if it needs to go back for the bottom panel lines to line up. So obviously the problem is, is the, the upper panel lines are, are out of sync with the actual form of the, the wingtip. The other thing to note is when you look at it like this, it kind of comes down and then bulges out. So it's going to need something in the wing to hold its shape because it kind of I can actually show you if I pull this sponge out, you'll probably be able to see what happens. It's um, the wing goes in, goes in here and then comes out on the wing tip. So it's probably going to have to probably cut a piece of the, sand, the sanding sponge off and just glue it in there. And that keeps it all sort of, you can, when you build yours, you'll see what I mean, but you can feel it um, without that in there. It kind of, it's kind of fat and then goes thin and then comes out again. So, um, that's going to look awful, especially if you have any sheen on your model at all. So, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of hard work in doing this. As I say, I really don't understand why they've done this. It's um, quite, quite daft, I think. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just make a top and a bottom, you know, or, or do like um, wing that wings are doing and have this attached to the fuselage and have the joint that comes off there. And that way you can stand the fuselage on the undercarriage. Um, I, mean, I don't particularly want to have removable wings anyway, uh, but yeah, um, I think this is a bit of a, I don't know. So there we go. So that's how the tip goes on. Now what I'm going to do is scribe that line slightly deeper uh, and then pick out these rivets with a pin and then sand. And then as soon as I see rivets start to disappear, just pick them out with a pin again. And that way you don't have to re-rivet. You're just actually deepening what's already there. Um, but they are very, very close to the edge, so it's going to take a lot of care. And I don't know if I can get that on the light there, where that join is. But um, it's not a, it's, it's not a bad join at all. Um, but as I say, as I showed you, it took a lot of work, a lot of messing about. I may have to mask off and put some Mr. Surfacer in there, just to get it looking the same as the other panel lines. Um, but. Uh, as I say, it's a hell of a lot of work on such a visible spot, and it's a shame they made it this way, but um, it is what it is. So uh, there we go, that's the work on the wings. Right, I've got a, uh, a bigger ball cutter now, and this is the kind of thing you, you're looking for. Um, this one's actually carbide, so uh, quite expensive. Um, but uh, this one's actually about 5.7 million diameter. So it's, uh, it's perfect for this. These are 5.5 .5, and all you do is put it in there and just roll it around like so. And then you get that, that bowl effect that you need for your, uh, for your landing lights. And like I say, luckily the plastic's thick enough. It must be very thick in that area. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's, that's one good thing that the plastic is thick in that area. Unfortunately, the plastic is very thin on this side, but um, yeah, there you go. So um, I think we'll call that a wrap there. So basically what I've covered in this video is doing these landing lights. Um, we've looked at all this, um, this uh, flap mechanism inside the wing and this part that goes in front of the ailerons. Unfortunately, the ejector pin marks can't be sanded out, so they're gonna need to be filled. Uh, all the ejector pin marks in here are in awkward places and will need to be sanded out. Edward are coming out, or Edward are coming out with a um, a flap set, uh, but it's like seventy pounds, so um, might be worth hanging on if you're thinking about getting the Edard stuff. Sorry, I had a coughing fit again there. Uh, it might be worth hanging on if you're thinking of getting any Edard stuff because um, I noticed that Hannant's they do a ten percent discount for pre-ordering, which is great, you know, magic. Um, but I noticed I looked on the Edard site today to see basically you know what's coming and if anything else has been released yet and um, they're already giving 20% off the three sets they do for the Lancaster so basically that cockpit set I showed you last week is now £11.50 or something on the um, Edward site so uh, yeah definitely worth considering so um, 
that could mean, I mean, it could mean that the flap set could be as low as like £40. So you might want to consider that. I don't know. Um, I certainly don't like this. And I know that the Wingnut Wings one is a lot better in this area because, well, I've seen their CAD images and I would imagine that they're going to be very similar to the CAD images. Uh, but um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, we've looked at that. We've looked at that. I showed you how to put this um, or shown you how to put this wing tip on. Um, take your time. Just, you know, as I say, with this one, the starboard wing, yours will be the same. You need to pack pack up the flange on the wing to make the tip sit higher and on the underside you need to scrape material away from the wing tip to make the wing tip sit more level down flush with the wing there's still a slight step there but as I say what I'm going to do I'll give this cup a couple of days for the glue to go really hard and then what I'm going to do is pick out the rivets with a pin and then sand gently to get the the shape right um, and then again pick the rivets out uh, it's going to take a long time but you know it's such a prominent area it needs to be right and unfortunately it's all it's all out of shape you can see there the actual leading edge of that wing tip doesn't match the leading edge of the wing at all in fact when it's um on the sprue or even without this packing inside it, the whole thing is a lot fatter and i've had to squeeze it and you can see where i've actually deformed the plastic there in in squeezing it in and getting it less bulbous so um there we go if you're building one of these have a go at that and uh, good luck to you is all i can say but um yeah you should be able to get a fairly decent decent join and um concentrate on the top first and then do the bottom after i think what i might do now once the glue has gone off i might put some five minute epoxy down in there on a cocktail stick and just swirl it around just to help strengthen that joint up because you know if the wing tip gets knocked or if you move the wing you know pick the model up by the wing tips or whatever i think they could well break off um, because you don't really want to go putting loads of glue in there and getting it oozing out of the joint and everything. So, um, yeah, I'll say again, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again real soon with another update on this um, monster of a model. Monster in more than one way, not just size.